name is Kim and I'm in my totally messy kitchen and I'm gonna be making candles. I pull up a chair, pull up something that I want to be making and uh, play along as I go. I have about 45 minutes till I have to go pick my son up from school so I'm gonna make this quick. Now the reason I'm here today, I didn't plan to do a Facebook live video of making candles. I was going to do this for my patrons on Patreon and the technology I was going to use to do that for my patrons was wah, wah, and I can't figure out why it didn't work and I'm hoping for tech support to come but I was all set up to do this so here I am on Facebook live because I have to clean up my kitchen and if I don't make the candles then I have to clean the kitchen up without at least having the candles so that is silly so I'm going to show you a bit about what I have going on here if you have made candles before you know the drill it's uh, pretty simple to make candles it's like a melt and mix and pour situation and then you're done so what I have going on here now I've already kind of got my stove going. I have two pots set up as double boilers and in each pot is a container kind of like this with wax in it and you can kind of see that looks like flaky bits of wax. I'm using soy wax and you can buy it kind of in bulk. I have a big bag of it over here and the reason you want it in flakes is because it melts way faster surface area. So kind of good thing going on. I'm going to just stir this a little bit and turn down the heat on my burners because it's too loud for me to even hear myself right now. So I'm just going to stir the, the wax and I have two containers going. One is larger than the other and the reason I have two going is that I want to make candles with different um, scents. So I've got my double boilers going. I've got the camera set up above my stove so like the boilers are right down here. What else did I use? I measured out. I used a kitchen scale to measure out the, by weight, the amount of wax in each of the two containers so that I can put in the right ratio of fragrance oil. Speaking of which, uh, I have some lavender essential oil and I found this, uh, I didn't even, I don't even know what this is, but it's called energy fragrance oil. Um, it smells citrusy and bright and delightful. So I'm going to use that for uh, a couple of the candles too. Other things that you need in addition to wax and ways to scent the wax. Now you don't have to make scented candles at all, right? So that's an optional step. I also have uh, an old spoon just to use to stir the wax around so that it melts faster. I have things to pour my candles into. I am a big fan of reusing things I would otherwise discard. So I have old teacups around. I have random shot glasses you get from like participating in events. Um, I have an old tea canister. So what's neat about this is that you can put a lid on the candle when you're done. And uh, to show you kind of what's going on, I also have some candles that I made earlier in the week. So my son and I made candles for his teachers. It's the last week of school before, <coughs> excuse me, before winter break this week. And so we're going to give his teachers or he's going to give his teachers candles that we made. Uh, we're not giving them a shot glass candle, but I poured some uh, extra wax into this candle. It smells like, it smells like soap, that's weird. Oh no, it smells like van lavender, lavender, not vanilla, lavender. Um, this is one of the candles that we'll give to his teacher. I'm going to just sniff the wick there. And these were mugs that I have been keeping around in a box for a long time, waiting to make candles out of them. So what else makes a candle? A wick. I have bunch of wicks that I purchased and they're already set up. You don't always find wicks that are already set up, but they're easy to set up yourself. They've got this little kind of metal disc at the bottom and there's a hole and the wick gets set right into the hole and you set that into the candle vessel and you make it stick. I use some of that blue kind of tacky stuff you can use to put posters on the wall really simple. So I've already kind of centered that in the bottom of my little teacup. And then to get the wick all sorted, I just stick the metal piece of the wick right in there and I'll be good to go. And then once the candle has set, I'll trim the wick so that it's the appropriate size and then we're golden. So that will end up looking like this. See, lovely candle in a teacup. Um, and that's it. I feel like, oh, also, wait, one more thing that I have. I have this gross wax covered uh, thermometer and I only use this when I'm making candles, obviously. Um, it's got instructions for deep frying on the back. 
so good, good to know. Um, and I use that to determine the temperature of the wax because you don't want the wax to be too hot when you put the fragrance oil into it or it won't take so well. Um, and you also don't want it to be too cool, I think, although let me know. So there are questions, like you can leave comments on this video as we go. So if you have questions about what I'm doing or why, or if you're tuning in late uh, or after I started and you need to know sort of what are you doing, Kim, and why are you doing it, go ahead and ask because I'm staring right here at the camera and I can see. Sorry, banging the spoon. Get the wax just stuck on there. Um, so I'm now just waiting. I thought that I had gotten this going early enough that it would just be nice and melted and then I would start making candles and so tell me how you're doing. What are you making? Have you ever made candles before? Is this something you're interested in doing? Uh, what's your favorite scent? Tell me things about yourself while we're sitting here waiting for wax to melt. Bang. 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 Sorry. It's like delightful. Um, so it is important uh, to use a double boiler. If you're unfamiliar with the concept of a double boiler, the idea is that if you just set wax into a pot on the stove, it will cook um, and might burn onto the pot. So, oh, hi, Greg. <laughs> That's my husband and his favorite scent is cucumber melon. It's true. He is a sucker for any soap that smells like cucumber melon. There's many a gift shop over the course of our relationship that we have not left without cu cucumber melon soap. Um, so there you have it. So cucumber melon, there's one vote for that. I'm not a fan so much. I prefer vanilla or even like cinnamony. I love cinnamon. Um, so what am I looking at here? Oh, the thermometer. So I will, once the wax is melted, um, the wax actually doesn't have a very high melting point, but it takes a while for all of it to melt. So it gets to be pretty hot and you want to put, you want to make sure that the, the wax is kind of under 180 degrees Fahrenheit before you put the fragrance oil in. You just made a notebook out of your little book. No way. <laughs> Missy, that, that's awesome. A notebook out of a My Little Pony box. Do you have a photo of it? Is it a vintage My Little Pony box or like a box from our, do they still make My Little Pony? I used to love My Little Pony when I was little, but I, I think they've gone kind of super fancy since I was little. They were so simple. I had a purple one and I loved it. I used to brush its hair. It was the closest thing to Barbies I ever liked as a kid. Um, Barbies I was not a fan of, but I did once kill an enormous Barbie. Wow. Okay. We're getting there. I'm going to kind of lift this one up because it has a handle. I'll show you what it's looking like in there. See, it's more liquidy than solid. And soon we'll be going. I'm going to need to use an oven mitt to pick up the canister in the other pot. Right. So the double boiler. So the idea of, of a double boiler, and you, you do this when you, um, it was an, it was a plastic toy. Oh, there's a new show for My Little Pony. Oh, that's awesome. In the next year, as I commit to a regular art journaling practice, which I'm totally going to commit to doing, I, I am, I have in my mind committed, um, I would not be surprised if a part of my experience of that will eventually be making my own uh, art journaling notebooks. And I think, Misty, you do that for yourself, too. Um, is that what the, what the My Little Pony notebook is going to be for? Or will it be a gift? Or are you going to use it? Um, I just love that. That is awesome. Okay. I'm getting there. I'm going to turn the back burner up a little. Nope, oh, that's good. I'm going to turn the back burner up a little. And, uh, okay. There we go. So the wax is easy. Soy wax is super easy and it burns clean, which is really nice. Nice. You make your own. You always make your own, Misty, your own art journals. That is, oh, I aspire and I'm going to hold myself to it. So the max, the, the max, the wax is almost melted for those of you just tuning in. And what I'm going to do once it's melted is I'm going to remove it from the heat and take the temperature and see if it is an appropriate temperature for adding the fragrance oil. Um, and I've got one big batch and one smaller batch. And I think I'm going to make the big batch smell like lavender. And the small batch, ooh, that's like boiling. We're just going to turn the temperature up. Um, 
smaller batch will be the energized. I don't really like to be energized so much, so the journal will go to a friend. Oh, nice. That's so cool. Double gift. They get a My Little Pony and a book made from the packaging. I think that's the most special kind. Okay, so let's see how we're doing. We're almost melted in the big batch, so I guess that might be the first one that I do. Now, you can't quite see it here, but down here on the counter, I've got just cardboard down because this will make a mess of wax. And wax, I mean, it's not like there are worse things you could get all over your kitchen, but it is a pain to clean up. So I'm going to move that scale, and I'm going to stick this thermometer in and do my best not to burn my hand. Uh, that would be unfortunate. Let's see. I might need to take this out and show you these. You know what? I think I'm going to take... Woo! So this is cool. It's like a... It's um, like a pitcher, which is makes it super convenient to um, melt wax because, sorry, super convenient for making candles because then you can just take it by the handle, pour it into whatever you're going for, and you are set. Now, is it really that? Not that hot. It's, I'm looking at only like 100 and, 155 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, that's not too bad. All right, so it is pretty hot. I'm going to keep it just back in the double boiler, and I'm going to get my, right, the container is super awesome. I can't remember where I found it, but at a candle-making supply place where you can get sort of bulk bags of soy wax and stuff, you can find any of these in its container. So I'm going to make this smell like lavender. And you know what? I also found vanilla bean fragrance oil. Um, so, right, mental note, uh... When you see something that's labeled vanilla essential oil, it's a bald-faced lie. There's no essential oil that's made from vanilla. You're being sold a bill of goods. Uh, so vanilla is always fragrance oil. It's different, and you don't apply it to your skin or use it in cosmetics in the same way as an essential oil. But I'm kind of low on the lavender in here, so I might cut it a bit with vanilla. I think that might smell pretty good. I don't know. Um, and I have here a trusted... Uh, tablespoon measure that I don't use for food because that would be gross. So what I'm going to do now is pour, actually I'm going to take this out of here and I'm going to see if I can get this, I'm going to rearrange the camera so that you can see. I'm just going to dry this off a little bit. And it's not super duper hot, right? I didn't boil this. Um, so I have about a pound and a half of wax that melted in here. It actually, it, like it doesn't come out to be that much, right? It's pretty, this isn't even halfway full, it's not even near halfway full, this pitcher, um, and I'm going to measure out about three tablespoons of fragrance, so mm, give or take, I might go a little bit light on it, because I don't like candles that like are overwhelming or make me want to, you know, okay, so wait, let me see if I can not burn myself, and I can turn the camera over, no, not really, oh, sorry, I've got this on like a bendy thing, so you can kind of see, here's my pitcher, and I'm going to measure, sorry, this is like, oh, you're going to get motion sick. Okay, here we go. I'm going to pour the lavender essential oil in here, and let's see if I've got one tablespoon of it, two, oh, I might not even need any more though. Let's see, two tablespoons of it, and about, oh, just under three. I'm going to call that about two and a half. And I'm going to call that quits. I'm not even going to experiment with the vanilla in there. Although, I mean, it might be. No, that smells lovely. Ah. So I'm going to use my spoon, and I'm going to stir it around. And I want to pour it when it's about 130 degrees-ish, give or take. Um, so I'm going to put the thermometer back in here, and it cools off pretty quickly. So I'm not too worried about this because we're like in the range. Um, unlike soap making, if you were around a couple weeks ago when I was making soap and it was very important that the temperatures were kind of calibrated and the chemistry was really calibrated um, with, with, oh, sorry, I'm boiling. I'm hearing, turning, turning the heat down. Ah, don't want to overcook the wax. That would be gross. So 
we are looking good right here. And uh, let me get a couple of things. So I'm going to make one of these teacup, teacup candles. And oh, right, let me show you. I also have like these kind of guys, right? One of the things about making candles is you want the wick to be centered. You want a centered wick so that it looks nice and symmetrical and burns evenly. And this thing has like a little notch that you can insert the wick into so that it stays nice and straight up and centered. So I'm gonna put this candle down and I'm just gonna pour the wax into the mug and you can see that it's clear. And I'm gonna stop right there and I'm gonna recenter the wick. And then I'm gonna gently, so I don't spill, move this aside so it can dry and then, sorry, cool. And as the wax cools, it changes from that kind of yellowish liquid into an opaque, white, beautiful wax, right? That looks like this is the finished candle, which is quite lovely. You can definitely use colorant in candles, but uh, I don't like to so much because I think um, I like just the, the nice white. Although I have used old crayons and melted them up and swirled that in with soy wax, and crayons stink when you <laughs> melt them, so you don't want to use a lot of melted crayons in a candle because then when it burns, even if you put scent in, it kind of stinks like melted crayons, which, you know, whatever, it's fine. I guess, I don't know, maybe it's whatever makes it so that kids can eat them that, <laughs> that smells so bad. Um, but in moderation, a little bit, it is pretty fun. So I'm gonna, this was a mug that I got in a kit at a gift exchange. We have like a historically vicious gift exchange with friends every year at Christmas time. And uh, two other, ah, yeah, the wick thing. I only have two of them, so I have to make them count. Um, and I don't love this mug. There are so many mugs I do love that I like the uh, excuse to use this mug. So I'm going to leave a little bit of space there. And then let this wick come together. Ooh, I should have done this before. Whoa, definitely. Well, we're gonna, sorry, I'm getting wax on my fingers as I do this. Learn from my mistake. Center your wick before you pour the wax. So now you can see this looks kind of like apple juice, kind of gross. And I'm gonna set this aside and let that cool. And then I have a bit, we're kind of getting toward the bottom here, of the vanilla wax left. And I have, let's see, what am I gonna use? Um, let's see, I have, I got like a stack of vintage um, like baking molds at a, like an antique store several years ago. I've already made at least a dozen candles in them. Uh, so these would need to be put on a plate or something, but I've got this set up. Oh, I don't have a wick in it. Huh, do I have anything with a wick in it? Let me put this back so it doesn't, melt and I am going to get a wick out of this little bag. Now this you'll see the wick half here are super long. So I'm just going to um, I'm just going to cut that down at the end and then whatever I cut off of the wick, it's not wasted. I can always get more of these silver things which I have a stash of and just make smaller wicks the next time around. So I've got that down in there, and I'm not going to use anything for this wick. It's going to be little enough. I'm going to just wing it as far as centering the wick goes. I'm going to take this oh, very dripping wax out of the double boiler. Pour a little bit too very much. Just pour that in there. Oh, boy. Now I'm not going to be able to move it. Ha <laughs> ha! Um, I can gingerly move it. I'm going to get a bit of wax in my fingers all day. Steady, steady hand. Okay, done, and oh my goodness, there's still more, so guess what? Oh, you know what? This shot glass that I did yesterday, or the other day with my son, there's a little bit more space at the top. I ran out, so I'm just going to pour some more on there, and it will be fine, because what will happen is the hot wax that I'm pouring in will melt the surface layer of wax, and they'll just fuse together. So look at that. Now we've kind of topped that up a bit, move that aside. That was vanilla, 
so that'll be all perfect. And then, oh, no wick. Oh my goodness. It's nice doing this on the stove, though. At least I have a place to put my a hot container of wax. And then get this going in here. What time is it? Oh, I have plenty of time. See, this is super quick. Now, the nice thing about candles is that once you pour them, they only take a few hours to set. So you can do this, like, if tomorrow is your kid's last day of school before winter break, and you had all sorts of lofty goals in mind for making their teachers handmade gifts in thanks for all of their great teaching, if you've got supplies like this or you can run out to a craft store and get some tonight, they will be set and ready to give by tomorrow morning. It only takes four to six hours for the candle to set. So it's a pretty great last minute thing. And you'll see that I got pretty much all of this done in, I don't know, how long have we been here? 20 minutes, half an hour? Um, so pretty, pretty easy, nice, simple thing to do. So now I've got my second, sorry, I need my uh, protective oven mitt. I have my second container of wax that I'm gonna pull off the stove right here, dry it. Ooh, look, I got wax on the dish towel. Ah, delightful. Um, and I'm going to give it a stir. Now, there's only about a half a pound of wax in this container, so it will take much less fragrance, fragrance oil to go in there. But I'm going to just see that the water in the double boiler was boiling for a while there, so I don't know if this one got super hot. But I turned the burner off, so it should be cooled down quite a lot that you're not going to burn the oils or anything like that. Oh, we're doing just fine here. So I'm going to use some of this energy fragrance oil. I have no idea what it is. It's going to be a grand experiment. And ordinarily, I would be like, ooh, got to, like, clean out the scoop or use a different scoop. But I'm like, meh, a tiny bit of vanilla will only make this more interesting and layered and deep. Depths of scent. So I'm only going to put one tablespoon into this quantity of oil. All right. So that's in there. I'm just going to close this up, set it aside. So this is a really small bottle, but that tablespoon didn't even use half of it. So if you are into experimenting with things or you don't want to commit to very... Um, Expensive, like you don't want to lay out a ton of money to get started doing something like this. You absolutely don't have to. All you need uh, is wax and wicks, and you're good to go. You can add some fragrance oil onto that if you want. I believe there was a whole section. I was at Michael's Arts and Crafts store the other day, and they had a whole section with fragrance oils and colorants. So you can definitely, in a very low pressure way, do lots of experimenting if you are so inclined. So I'm going to fill this David's tea container up now with my energy wax. If I had been organized, I would have removed the labels <laughs> before I did this, but you know, we're just going to, we're just going to go with it. Maybe I will keep this for myself. Pouring this in. It's not as easy to pour than, oops, than the other container because it doesn't have a spout or a cap. So it can be a bit messier. Oh, look at this. 100% of the oil fills this container right up. So now there are ways of sort of securing your wick using things like a pencil and wrapping it around, but these wicks that I have are waxed, so it's hard to wrap it around securely something. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna set this aside to cool. And once I've set it aside, I'm going to make sure that the wick is kind of centered. And as long as I don't touch it, it won't move around. Let me just move this up to the ah, height so I don't have to lean down anymore. Um, as long as the wick doesn't move around while the wax sets, then you're good. So that is it. Uh, thanks for joining me for making these candles. I'm going to let these just sit and set. And when they're done, I'll just have candles that are white and smell good, and I will trim the wicks, and over the course of the next few weeks, with Christmas coming, with Hanukkah coming, with family birthdays coming, I will kind of 
distribute these around to the people that I know and love. There will be some hostess gifts and uh, it'll probably take me longer to clean up the kitchen and to get the wax suitably cleaned up from these containers and the spoons and stuff than it did to actually make the candles. So thanks for coming. If you're watching this in a replay, ask any questions you want in the comments. I'll get alerted to them and I'll answer in the comments. And if you would like more inspiration to get crafty and creative in a way that's stress-free and that makes you happy, check out my website at kimworker.com. There's no O in my name. It's W-E-R-K-E-R. -E -E you can support my work on Patreon at patreon.com slash kpworker. And again, do ask questions or if you are a longtime, lifelong candle maker, I'd love it if you would share some tips. We can all learn from you too. So thanks, you guys. See you soon.